Good morning, everybody. So I wanted to talk about, somebody asked how could the narcissist get healing or what's the best process, in my opinion. So I'm gonna go over a construct about the narcissist child and how I believe some of this happened. So what makes you an individual is when you are a little child, okay? And you, okay, you're a little child and in the very beginning, you're just following the hierarchy of your family and adults, right? They tell you what to do or they, and you know, all you can do is follow their lead. But what makes you an individual is, is as you get a little bit of age to you, you get treated a certain way. It could be good, it could be bad, but then you have emotions with that. And a lot of times it's, it's usually probably more the bad emotions <laughs> that get, that's what gets people to quit process. That's, that gets to this point. But typically the way I see it is what makes somebody an individual is when you start to process the way somebody treated you in, in say even your toddler stage, you get treated maybe very bad. Then you have to sit back and that is like the first time of you getting your individuality is when you sit back and you actually have these feelings of how you were treated. And when you get these feelings of how you were treated, then you go down the road of processing them. And this is where you get understanding maybe of what right and what wrong is. I think where the scapegoat or the empath in the narcissistic family, what saves them is they have an understanding from processing that all of this is wrong. And it talks in the Bible a lot about to get knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And I feel that in my life, even when I was going down bad constructs or things that I didn't want to do. I had the understanding that it was wrong or that the life that was set up for me, that I had to walk down certain paths for a time out of survival. I knew that it was wrong and I had knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to find my way out of it. But I also had the grace of God. Maybe somebody treated you good or somebody, but when somebody treats you bad is when this tends to occur. So there is some trauma involved, but it may not be that traumatic if you were to go back and see what type of trauma caused this initially. But regardless, this is how it works. You get treated a certain way and you as the small child are not just following your parents anymore, but you are forced to deal with feelings. And when you're forced to deal with feelings, you got to sit back and process them. I was treated bad or I was treated good. And this is where you get right and wrong from. I was treated wrong or I was treated right. And because I process these emotions and I'm processing these emotions, then I can know how I should be and how I'm going to conduct business from my point of view, okay? And this is what makes somebody an individual. This is the beginnings of somebody becoming an individual. I think that how both the narcissist and the empath start out, or the scapegoat, both are people pleasers. They're both people pleasers. Except we would please the narcissist out of love, and we would want to help them. The narcissist wanted to, they decided to people please in walking in their shoes, to becoming like the abuser, to mimic the abuser. And so that's where they went wrong. And I think that what they do 
is when they had bad emotions occur, they, they were out of fear. They formed pride. Because I dealt with some of this, you know. They build pride and they block things with pride. Pride is the ultimate thing that freezes you. It's fear, but then pride is what takes all the courage away. And I know this because when I wanted to get saved, I was, I'd be sitting in the church and I wanted to get saved, right? But out of fear, I put pride up when I was young and growing up in a narcissistic family. See, because when you grow up in a narcissistic family, you're going to be on an arc vibration because they're draining you every day. And you're not going to get regular friends because the way that they treat you, when you bring your friends over, they're not going to hang out with you anymore. They're going to belittle you. And then when your friends, good, good people friends come over, they're going to belittle you too because they're going to get used to that. And they're going to make sure that they get it to where your friends are just not going to have good individuals that we would call during childhood, the ones that maybe you would choose if you had the ability to and the resources, right? The narcissist family is not going to give that to you and they're not going to train you up in, in any, any good way. You're going to be, you're going to have to do it alone and you're going to be sabotaged. So that's why this stuff continues even if you're a good individual. You grow up on a narc, narc vibration, but you're not a narcissist. And a lot of times you walk down some of these paths of the narcissist because out of survival, the empath has to have different masks too. They hate it. But you can't tell the truth to a, in a narcissistic family because they'll destroy you. And you know that. And you also know what is not seen is not heard. Or... It's like a don't ask, don't tell. And you hate it. And as you get older, you rebuttal that. You give pushback to that when you get into your younger teens. They don't process their emotions, y'all. And that's why there's nothing in here. And it's, it's true. You have to get over pride to get saved. And it was like the hardest thing. Out of fear, you put pride in front of it. You don't even have to show anybody. You could just act smug, but you ain't gonna get up and walk to no altar. You're gonna be sweating inside. I was there. But I started to process my own emotions at some point in time. As a young teen, more and more, I started to cultivate that. But I was always innately who I was, and that's the thing. I do believe to some degree there is some sort of innateness to us. But somebody can look evil and not be evil. They can just be doing that because they're jaded. And that's why you see people change. Because even though they were hurt, they decided to forgive or and to let that pride go. And a lot of times to get saved, really. I say that I always have said in the past, and maybe I'm wrong, but two things that really affect change in your life is real bad things happening that wakes you up or God. Again, though, without salvation, you know, you're not going to get to heaven. And I, I'm not saying that that's just, this is my opinion and what I've experienced also through salvation, you know. And when I got saved and I started to read the word, I started to see drastic steps of change in my life to where I was able to shed a lot of this. Because I did have jealousy and things like that. But a lot of it is, and, and that stuff falls off of you. But you do, when you're in a certain mode, you are in a construct that's walking down black. But that's also, when you grow up in a narcissistic family, they 
in my opinion, what I grew up in, it, it was lack all the time. And so somebody asked how you, how would you help maybe your son out that maybe going down that path? Well, I would say that you have to get them to process their emotions and they got to get comfortable with you and you got to help them. And I think that's the first step because what makes you an individual from a shell of a human from looking for, for, for outside validation is first to get some kind of ways to process who you are and how you feel about things. A lot of times what they did is they would continue to follow the construct of the abuser and people please by being like them, the brown noser. And they were like the narcissist A1 student. And because they walk down that construct, they don't process, they just obey. And then they become an extension of the narcissist hierarchy, whoever raised them that they are looking up to. And they, it's like both are people pleasing, but in different directions. You innately could never be the narcissist because you could never get yourself to walk down the evil path, not to that level. And if you did, you were just doing it out of survival until you could get the hell out of there. But until a child processes their emotions, their thoughts, and get an understanding of how they feel and what they think about it, and how that helps them to conduct how they're going to live their life, not just following and obeying or, or viewing a construct and copying it, they could still hate that narcissist uh, abuser. But they, they also know that that narcissist abuser got power and control and they watched what it did for that narcissist. And so they copied it even if they hated him because they didn't want to be abu the abused. So they became the abuser. And that's why when they get older, they don't really think for themselves emotionally on a certain level, not in good ways. just in evil ways. And that's why slights can make somebody be completely angry or turned off by you because they don't know how to process it. So they, again, the wall of pride comes up and they will either rage out or they will give you silent treatment because they don't know how to process it. And then they will seethe over that hate and that's why they can, that's why they can outlast you on when, when you would uh, do no contact, for instance, in the very beginning and you failed. It's because they get thoughts of seething hate or anger that helps them feel some sort of satiety in it all, but it's very burdensome. And so I think that first they have to start to process their own thoughts and process all these backed up emotions with somebody who's not going to shame them and give them some sort of comfort to do that and to help them, somebody that they can confide in. And then, but again, the pride is so heavy, it's hard to let anybody in. And pride, the pride and the fear blocks almost everybody out from the inner individual. They like to isolate you. Like I said, every construct that they put you in is the same constructs that they were put in chains with. They were isolated, y'all, out of fear and out of pride. The problem is at some point, they got very comfortable with it and they believed it to be a way of life. And sometimes they believe other people should think this way and be this way. And a lot of times they gloat about it and stuff amongst each other when 
they've gotten over on somebody because they look at them as naive and weak and stupid. But they have a whole nother construct of thinking because they've gotten so far away of, from what the fruits of the spirit are. But definitely salvation is the key. But you also have to be able to process your, your emotions and your thoughts and think for yourself. The problem is, is they are on a construct that almost gets them to where they're almost to some degree individuals that are just going through the motions of life. I mean, they can learn things. They could, they could be very, very intelligent, but not very smart. It's like this world we live in today. I don't know if it's true, but they say, you know, according to our technology and our what our history has told us, which I question, but that we're we we can get somewhere faster than ever. But a lot of times we're not we're going nowhere. They'll tell you that we're smarter than ever, we're more intelligent than ever. But we're not wiser. They'll tell us that we're more genetically savvy than ever before in history of, of time. But we're breaking down quicker and quicker, faster and faster. And that's because a lot of things, the way they were meant to be, it, the world has gotten so corrupt that it has caused everything to be inside out from what it should be backwards the enemy is backwards and that's why these individuals think backwards because at some point they get in filled with demons whether they know it or not the construct that they walk down leads to open doors and entities coming in it's it's like you're building a home for the enemy to live in that's what the construct is built on and to some degree when they talk about the mark of the beast it's almost like you can get to a point with no love that you could be almost the mark of the beast in physical form without love, y'all. And you almost act like a beast of the field. Can some get help? Maybe. There's not many cases, but a lot of times people can get healed from things and they didn't even know there was a title to it. You know, a lot of, we didn't know about narcissism. So if, for instance, a narcissist did somehow get healed through God and through salvation, then that individual may not even know what the heck it was called, the, the diagnosis of it. So I think those types of things are very possible. But, I mean, I don't put anything outside of what God can do. I mean, in the Bible, Paul was a killer of Christians. And became God's most one of God's most fervent. But it does take God to get there. So when I say that they have to start, that they have to start thinking for themselves. Because you have to have, in a sense, some sort of soul in here to get saved. I don't think the church talks about this much. And you know, this is my own humble opinion. So I study a lot and everything, but I, I am a free thinker to some degree, but it's all biblical based in my opinion. It really is. And a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people with religious spirits and stuff, but it is what it is, man. I believe that they always say that you need to get saved to go to heaven, but I, what they don't tell you is that you need something besides that. You know, you need a soul. And if you're not cultivating it, or thinking for yourself, then there's another issue there. And how you kind of become so less in, in a sense is when you never process any emotions, man, on, on a level of goodness. And what does it is fear and pride. Because it starts with fear and then pride is what protects it, protects the fear. But it also puts the individual in a frozen state 
a circle to nowhere. And that's exactly what the narcissist comes to make you do. See, they latch onto you, attach to you. See, a parasite, once it feeds off whatever it's feeding off, it jumps onto other, it just keeps multiplying. And then it needs more and more and more. A parasite's insatiable over time. And see, once the parasite has taken over an individual completely, then they start to branch out and they start to, that's why they come to you. So you become an extension of the narcissist. The narcissist is an extension of the enemy. And that's why, just like Christ has, there's a body of Christ, right? Or there's Christ and Antichrist. That's the flip of Christ, the enemy. Well, if Christ has a body of Christ, his church, then the enemy has one too. And that's why when you become an extension of the narcissist, and that's what they believe and that's what they tell you even in psychology, you're an arm of the enemy. That's why when you get with a narcissist, you can't even get to God anymore at some point. You can't pray, you can't read, you can't meditate on the word, you can't nothing. You're fogged up. And if you are with a narcissist and you can do that, it's because you emotionally detached from the narcissist and you've gray rocked them and you're just coexisting with them. But that's my own opinion, y'all. This is off the cuff. So give me a break, man. I love y'all. Until next time, peace, we out.